Well, they've gathered on the shore, they've gathered on the water. Thousands of people have come to say farewell to these glorious sailing ships and their crews. They've come from ports all over the world, and now it's time to say goodbye. Here's Mercha. It's from Romania, home port, Costanza, Romania, and it's owned now, uh, David, by the Romanian Navy. That's right. I mentioned before she was one of these vessels that was built in Germany. You can see the crew are all standing on the foot ropes along the yards. Uh, probably getting ready to unfurl the sails. Um, th that's one of, the, uh, one of the things that you had to do on these square rig vessels, the ones that had these long yards. You, you had to climb up into the rigging on the ratlins and uh, go out along these ropes and uh, untie the sails so you can, uh, so you can unfurl them or, or set them. And uh, likewise, uh, you would have to uh, furl them or pull them in and tie them up onto the yard again. Now, uh, this is all very easy when uh, you're sailing out of a harbor like, uh, like Halifax on a beautiful day like today. And uh, there we see the figurehead of Prince Mercha. Prince Mercha was a hero of the uh, Romanian Navy and a uh, very colorful figurehead there. Uh, as I said before, uh, Mercha, when, when you're standing on these foot ropes, it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult sometimes to, to furl and unfurl these sails when the ship is heaving and you're in a, in a strong wind, and uh, it's very dangerous. Nowadays, they all have uh, lifelines and they're, they're all attached to the ship, but in the, uh, in the uh, 100 years ago, uh, there was one safety rule aboard the ship and one safety device, and it was one hand for the ship and one hand for yourself, and that's all that, uh, that people had. But it's much different now, and uh, the safety features on these vessels are really quite, uh, quite extensive, and uh, um, there's a very uh, small uh, uh, injury rate among these, among these vessels. They're very professionally crewed, and uh, once these people learn to go aloft, and uh, they pretty well know what they're doing. It's interesting, I talked to one of the officers uh, from uh, one of the other tall ships, uh, Quatemoc, and she talked about the fact that uh, on, uh, for some of them, the higher up you go, uh, to the higher yard arms, the, the smaller the surface area that you have to stand on becomes, so it actually becomes uh, slightly more difficult if you're actually up standing on the yard arms for formation and that sort of thing. That's right, and uh, you know, I, I guess the, the, the closest you will get this is to going on a, a ride at an amusement park, you know, some of these rides where you're pulled around in all different directions, but uh, you know, the, the loss of life on sailing ships in the 19th century was huge. I mean, there were over 10,000 uh, alone lost on British ships in the first decade of this century, just on British registered ships, and uh, over 400 ships were, were, were lost without a trace, but, uh, but you don't have that happening very often now. As I said before, these ships are very well built and uh, extremely well captained and crewed. And as daunting as it looks, I was also interested to learn that uh, most uh, of the cadets actually do, uh, with the right training and the right support, they are, they are able to make their way up. Um, that uh, most of them, although they're not always forced up, uh, most people, once they get on board the tall ships, either through uh, naval training or some of the sail training experiences, that uh, once they get up there, uh, they find it to be such an exhilarating experience, they want to go again and again. That's right. It's, uh, it's for, for a lot of people, it's sort of a life-changing experience for them, and, and they get to learn to do things they probably never expected they would ever do, or be, ever be able to do. Lots of cannon fire, lots of salutes, and uh, lots of applause as uh, people here uh, bid a farewell to the ships as they make their way out on a glorious day here in Halifax Harbor. Pogoria is coming up soon. Uh, Pogoria is a, 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 another one uh, built in Gdynia in Poland. Uh, she's a sail training vessel. She was built in 1980. Uh, uh, she spent a lot of time in Canadian waters. Uh, she was uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. She was chartered to a sail training organization uh, in Canada and, uh, and uh, really was one of the, the first large uh, ships to do sail training in Canadian waters. And there's a Canada is very well served nowadays. We we have a number of uh, a number of organizations uh, across the can across the country that are involved in sail training. Each have their own vessels. Uh, some are built here. Some are built abroad. Uh, on the west coast, we have the uh, Sea and Life Training Association, SALTS, so Life Training Society, and they've been around now for about 30 years. Uh, we have the Toronto Brigantines. We have a Brigantine in. in uh, in Kingston, the class afloat, and uh, West Island College in uh, in uh, in Montreal, 
And uh, here we see uh, Pogoria, uh, another of a Barkentine, again, one of these ones that were built in Poland at, uh, at the Gdansk shipyard. Um, and uh, here in Nova Scotia, we have uh, Canadian sailing expeditions, the Nova Scotia Sea School, and uh, even in Ottawa, we have the Bytown Brigantine. So uh, <laughs> we have tall ships on the Ottawa River as well. It's interesting you mentioned the uh, Gdansk shipyard, uh, another uh, Another story perhaps linked to the, uh, the building of uh, both Pagoria and um, Iskra, the uh, idea that at the time they were built, there was an engineer working uh, at the uh, Gdansk shipyards by the name of Lech Wałęsa, who went on to become the leader of the Solidarity Movement and then uh, leader of Poland. It's believed that he may perhaps have worked on uh, one of those ships. Yes, I, I think it's uh, it's quite possible that he did, and it's uh, again a nice uh, a nice tie-in with these vessels that are serving uh, that are serving their country very well. Spirit of Massachusetts uh, is another uh, another ship that uh, that will be coming up soon. Uh, she's a wooden vessel. Uh, uh, Pagoria that we see here is a steel hull vessel, and most of the sail training vessels that were, are built in Europe are uh, tend to be uh, tend to be steel hull vessels. Uh, their masts are steel, and uh, even the yards on, on some of them are. And uh, because they're they're made to uh, meant to last a long time, and uh, and they do a lot of ocean sailing. And uh, but the Spirit of Massachusetts was uh, was built in uh, in 1984, and uh, and she's a wooden vessel. Uh, if you notice the lines in Pregoria, you, you, can, you can see a very a sharp hull and uh, again she's a barkentine which, uh, which is, uh, seems to be the, uh, the, the rig of choice for a lot of these intermediate class training ships. The training age on the uh, ship is uh, between the ages of uh, 15 and 25. We usually have a professional crew of uh, about five. They have uh, five volunteer officers and about uh, 40 uh, trainees on board, so a, uh, and, a and busy a, ship. Uh, it's a busy ship and it's a nice mixture too and uh, it, you, you find that a, a number of, uh, a, a lot of the cadets that are on these vessels, sometimes they even come back as, uh, as members of crews, uh, especially on the, the naval sail training vessels. Now as we've uh, mentioned throughout the show, the theme of this year's uh, Tall Ships event is Salute to l'Acadie. Acadians from around the world are coming to Nova Scotia to celebrate the 400th anniversary of the first French settlement in Nova Scotia. Of course that means a lot of relatives in town, many families are planning huge family reunions. Tom Murphy dropped in on the Thibodeau family gathering. They've come from all over North America. Charlie Thibodeau, Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm uh, Gilbert Bonneau from Torso, Quebec. I'm a Thibodeau descendant and I live in Birmingham, Alabama. The Thibodeaux, just some of the thousands of Acadians coming to Nova Scotia this summer. More than 75 family reunions, the Camos, the Leblancs, the Doucettes, among others, all returning to their ancestral roots. In 1755, more than 11,000 Acadians were deported. Some went to France, most to American colonies. Both of us are descended from here. Yeah. Now, generations later, as part of the Acadian Congress, many families are reuniting. Well, it's a strange uh, experience because it's, it's something deep inside of you that really makes you proud that you're Acadian descent. To walk on the land that our ancestors walked on is, is very touching. And there are times you can feel the, you know, you feel that little emotion. For some, this Thibodeau reunion is an opportunity to bridge two histories. Sarah Beanlands is a descendant of English settlers dating back to the mid-1700s. Her family has lived on this land outside Windsor for eight generations. Land that Dick Thibodeau discovered used to belong to his family before the expulsion. The two met face to face for the first time at this reunion. Two families connected by history. And there was no real feeling whatsoever about the fact that they, you know, got the Thibodeau property after the expulsion. That's history. It's, uh, you know, the events that caused that to happen were then, not now. And it, it's nice to be able to share it with oh, yeah. the Thibodeau yeah. family. Together they are now researching the Thibodeau village and Lacadie. For them, a journey into history and genealogy that began four centuries ago. And we've really felt that Acadian connection here all weekend on the waterfront. There's been traditional food and music, musicians, 
Of course, there was the uh, Grutan village, uh, which had great events throughout uh, this, uh, this weekend and attracted huge crowds. But of course, what would a family reunion be without the food? Sophia Harris now on a favorite Acadian dish that is as much about tradition as it is about taste. This is the easy part. For Anne Sweeney, the raw pea pie ritual begins the night before with 10 pounds of potatoes and a friend to help her peel. When you have a lot of work ahead of you, it's quite common to do the potatoes the night before as well as to start your bra. Queenie's creating a traditional Acadian meal developed by poor French settlers with the one food supply in abundance, potatoes. Have you ever thought maybe this is just too much? No, <laughs> but quite a few people in my generation probably think that. It's a dying art. But Sweeney is keeping the art alive. Okay, Beth, if you want to start with the grating, it's slightly dangerous. Day two, Sweeney's family is visiting from Ottawa. Her daughter gets the grating job. Bring it over here to the press. Meanwhile, Sweeney's sister squeezes the grated potatoes dry in the traditional press, and her mother prepares the chicken. Does uh, your daughter make a good broccoli pie? Oh, yes. As good as yours? Or? Oh, yes. Uh, I. Uh, well... Have you ever made broccoli pie on your own? Never solo. No, I don't think I... I don't think I could quite take that on yet. I'm, uh, she will. I will, yeah, apparently. Break it up as much as you can. Once the potatoes are bone dry, it's time to add the chicken broth. Okay, dump and stir. And once the consistency is just right, the fruits of their labor go into a pan for three hours of cooking. Turned out A-OK. -okay. Now, the final task of eating. It's delicious. Sweeney's friend, Robbie Seal, has never had raw pea pie from scratch before. She admits Sweeney's is superior, and yet the tradition is lost on her. There'd be no way I'd ever work so hard <laughs> for any food. Sweeney's family knows it doesn't have to endure this. Supermarkets now sell frozen raw pea pie and mixes, but Sweeney insists they're short on taste and tradition. In the old days, they had lots of time because they didn't have the distractions that we have today. And even with the distractions, Sweeney's holding fast to her tradition, even the tradition of leftovers. Uh, fry that up in um, butter. And actually, a lot of people say that the leftover Robbie pie tastes better than when you had it the first time. Any Robbie pie, if it's made from scratch, is good. And I'm sure some of the spectators here had a chance to try some of that rapi pie down in uh, Grutan Village. That's right. Uh, it's probably a, a lot better than they would have had on sailing ships 100 years ago. <laughs> I mean, the uh, hardtack and bully beef doesn't quite, uh, doesn't quite size up. Not I quite the same thing at all. Well, we're going to take another short break right now, but stay with us. We'll have more of the Tall Ships 2004 Parade of Sail in just a few minutes.